We're going to have a look now at what is making headlines in the French press uh, today. Catherine Viet has joined us. Good morning, Catherine. Uh, we begin with the trial of uh, the former French minister, Jérôme Cahuzac. Right. It was a big scandal here in France. And he goes on trial for tax fraud. And what's rather ironic is he was hired as the budget minister, in fact, to cracked down on tax cheats. And then it turned out that he had secret accounts in Swiss banks, also in Singapore, in the Isle of Man. So um, the paper goes on. This is in Aujourd'hui uh, en France or Parisienne. The paper goes on to remind readers that he spent three months denying that he was a tax cheat. Um, and, uh, you know, now he and his ex-wife have hit away about three million euros, and that's going to be the subject of, um, of today's trial. Inside, the paper details a bit more about how he did this. Apparently, he had a code name. He named Birdie that he would call when he wanted to move these illicit funds. And just as a reminder, before entering into politics, he was a very famous plastic surgeon. And that's where it's believed he made most of this money that he hid away from the tax man. Uh, and before moving on, just wanted to uh, bring your attention to a cartoon that's also in Aujourd'hui en France. Um, so in this cartoon, the President Hollande is talking to uh, the Prime Minister, Manuel Valls, and also the uh, Economy Minister, Emmanuel Macron. And he's saying, um, you know, after Kawasak, we must remember that we can be both honest and socialist. And uh, Macron replies, well, why socialist? So a bit of a jab there that his policies aren't necessarily keeping with socialist well, Of course, the opening of a trial that will prove a painful reminder to the Hollande government of a huge embarrassment a few years back. There's uh, more uh, talk, meanwhile, of, imin of an imminent reshuffle. That's right, government reshuffle. Um, Le Figaro is reporting that with the expected departure of the foreign minister, Laurent Fabius, uh, to go and head the Constitutional Council, that this reshuffle is imminent. Uh, and the paper goes on to say, of course, you know, there's lots of discussions, lots of speculation uh, as to who could end up with what post. Um, but the plan at this point should be for Olan to use this opportunity to get rid of members of what the paper calls the rebellious left and look to strengthen the numbers of those in the, quote, responsible left. Uh, there's an editorial in Les Echo, the business paper, that sort of is, is kind of uh, repeating this theme. And it says that um, the ranks of the rebel left are continue to expand. Uh, the former minister of industrial renewal, Arnaud Montborg, is preparing a political, re political comeback and that he's going to be another one of these uh, voices on that rebel left to add criticism to what he's going to denounce as the economic Sark Hollandism <laughs> and a socialist party that's sort of in the process of becoming more conservative. And then finally, L'Opinion, again, another editorial. Um, it's calling the reshuffle ridiculous, harmful, and useless. Says after the circumflex, which is a, a nod to the debate over the spelling here in France, that um, you know they have to get on to uh, important issues. And Olan's going to spend the next few days trying to figure out how to bring the Greens in. That on their own, they're, they're sort of uh, not important enough, but he still will need their support in, for a possible re-election bid. Now, uh, uh, also in the French press this morning, Catherine, a former uh, head of the French Foreign Legion who finds himself in jail. Yes, that's right. Um, he was the former head of the uh, French Foreign Legion, General Christian Piquemal, and he was arrested at an Im anti-immigrant immigrant, excuse me, immigrant rally in Calais, and he's accused of having a leading role in that demonstration, unauthorized. It was uh, banned by the French foreign minister. The rally was called for by Pegida, which is a far-right anti-immigrant group that's based in Germany, um, and the paper says that those taking part knew it was illegal. Uh, the paper goes on to report on a tweet by Marion Le Pen. She's the niece of Marine Le Pen, the leader of the National Front that's known for its um, anti-immigration policies, and she tweets, support General Piquemal unjustly and brutally arrested in Calais. And finally, Catherine, uh, North Korea's latest missile launch also making headlines. Right. This was um, on the front page of Liberation, and uh, it's headline Kim Follamour, which is uh, the French for strange love. So it's a reference here calling the dear leader Kim Strange Love. So again, a nice reference to the Kubrick film Dr. Strange Love or How I Learned to Stop Worrying and Love the Bomb. Uh, the paper goes on to denounce the new provocation by this uh, missile launch. Now, North Korea 
contends that it was to launch a satellite into space, but really the international community considers it to be the launch of a long-range missile. Um, and the paper goes on to say the fact that North Korea went ahead with this demonstrates the impotence of the international community in dealing or reigning in North Korea. Thank you very much indeed, Catherine Viet. A look there at what is making headlines in the French press this morning at 26 minutes past seven. We're going to take a quick break and I'll be right back with the headlines also in the next half hour. This morning's focus, our correspondents have been to Tunisia where the new year brought in fresh protests and riots in some parts of the interior of the country. A great deal of dissatisfaction there more than five years on from uh, the Arab Spring in its very birthplace uh, with too few results uh, seen, as say many people, uh, by ordinary Tunisians uh, of uh, the results of that um, revolution that had uh, chased Ben Ali from power. We'll be hearing all about uh, the latest uh, from Tunisia in focus in just a moment.